Sorry, Guy. Right. Yes, boss. How are we so looking? You've been to my studio since since Rougerie, it's how oil is made. Yeah, once or twice. Well, today we're going to nip into the near future. Go on. Okay, so we're Euro 6 compliant now. Euro we're 7. We've years, haven't we? Uh, Euro 6, yeah. when did it first come in? 16. 16 around then, isn't it? Yeah. 16, 16. But yeah, we're, due yeah. for a, we're due for a step change now. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Euro 7. They keep talking about Euro 7. Yeah. When is it going to happen? Is 2025. It 100%. Well, things can drift, but 2025 is what they're aiming for. Is that the word? Absolutely, right, okay. 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 So 2025. So it's all about taking these engines to the next level of compliance. So, so one of the big, big changes we see straight away is fuel efficiency improvements. Yep. So if that engine is more fuel efficient, it's producing l less CO2 emissions, mm -hmm. essentially. Okay, so you're not using as much fuel to go the same distance. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. So a lot of things are changing. Uh, a lot of the after treatment device strategies are changing. So, for example, at the moment you're getting a single injection of ABLU, okay? So it goes into the, into the silencer part of the, the exhaust system. Yeah. Whereas now we're looking at two injections of ABLU. So one closer to the exhaust manifold where the temperatures are higher, so it evaporates quicker. Okay. So yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. that, that starts. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Okay. So, so that's happening. So we're starting to see the emergence of that. Um, the other big demand that's going to be put on these engines is in terms of a particulate number. Now, particulate matter, as you know, is the debris which is generated by the combustion process that the okay. DPF yeah, takes out. Yeah, yeah. So there's certain sizes of particulates that that DPF unit will take out of the exhaust gases before they go out into the, into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So now they're making those, those, those pores, if you like, the passageway smaller. So at the moment, oh, so the DPF is going to be yeah. The so at the moment, unit. particles up to 23 nanometers, okay, are allowed through. We're now going to be talking 10 nanometers. So yeah, so it's it's, it's getting smaller, smaller. So because obviously the, the, the smaller particles can be more harmful because they get blown around in the atmosphere. People can can breathe them in, and, and there can be respiratory problems, can be environmental problems. So so we're squeezing that. We're squeezing the the um, the, the, the how much particulate matter and the size of particulate matter which is allowed to come out the the exhaust pipe. Yeah, so yeah. that's a big change. We're seeing lots more modifications and engine engine management software is changing as well. So a lot of the engine management software is improving to a point now where they can very carefully control um, the the action of the inlet valve in terms of how much fuel's coming in. So fuel can be almost tailored to demand fractions of a second by fractions of a second. So if you actually optimise your use of fuel rather than slightly overfueling, of course, you use less fuel right. and therefore you produce less CO2. So the engine's more efficient. So actual control of the, of the inlet side of things, that's improving dramatically. We've also seen variable geometry turbochargers already being employed in Euro 6. So where the actual veins of the turbo can be altered depending on the boost requirement. If you can tailor that boost, Okay, you're making that, that, that engine as efficient as possible. Okay, so that, that variable, that, that's, that's still coming through. We're, seeing, uh, we're starting to see variable valve lift technology as well, which is passenger car really at the moment. Mm -hmm. So depending again on demand and power requirements, then you can, you can adjust the, uh, the, the valve timing. So that's again another uh, enhancement we'll be looking at. The, the most trick thing I've seen recently is actually by, uh, by you can alter the compression ratio. So variable compression ratio? Yeah, so variable compression ratio is basically, um, is, is actually moving the crank, angling the crank so you get either a shorter or a longer stroke. Now, I've not seen that. That is, that is some of these new technologies we're starting is to see come right? through. So yeah, so again, depending on demand, you, can, you could alter the compression ratio. Because compression ratios will be going up as well. I mean, that's the other thing with, with Euro 7 compliance. We started, we're started. we certainly seeing signs that the, you know, your average compression ratio for a diesel engine, I mean, what, we, what would you be used to? 23 to 1? 18 to 23 that to 1? That compression like. without the boost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah on, a, on a diesel. Yeah, yeah on a diesel. 20, 22, yeah. 23 yeah, to 1. Yeah, something like nature. So, you know, so if you can get those those pressures higher again, you get better fuel efficiency. So got more friction, frictional yeah. losses though with a higher. Well, cylinder. then you're moving towards steel pistons. We've we've we've, we've talked about steel pistons yeah, before. Yeah, you know, yeah. we've had the articulated pistons with the aluminium skirt and the and the steel steel crown. But now okay. we are moving to full steel. Now, although steel is is a heavier chunk than aluminium and aluminium and steel. Um, you can actually make it smaller. You can take actually material away because it's stronger. It's so much stronger, and and it will take higher peak cylinder pressures as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're building in that strength. 
The other beauty about steel is it expands at the same rate as, as the as the block that, it, that it's contained in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So expansion rates are the same. So, so, so the the actual clearances w within the bore remain constant. So you're not getting blow by yeah, gases going yeah, into yeah, the yeah. sump. Um, so uh, you can move compression rings nearer to the top of the the, the crown as well because it's stronger. It'll take that. So you've got too top. Yeah, if you get too close to the top of an aluminium piston crown. There's a, there's a chance for, for things to, to, to crack and various other you know um, uh, side effects which you don't want. But steel steel pistons are really strong, but they can put up with the high pressures, the higher temperatures. So we're seeing that start to come through as well. So there's going to be a lot of changes, but one of the big changes we see from a, from a lubricant point of view is is the move to to lower viscosity grades, thinner oils. So we've already seen step changes with people like Scania using 5W20, for example, which is now out in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, Avicos have used 0W20s for a little while, but we see all the major... Avicos 020? Yeah, they have a 0W20 to specify for certain engine types. But we are now seeing, as we move towards 2025, a lot more lower viscosity products coming through from, from the other major uh, original equipment manufacturers. So 530 is a pretty common fare now. But again, we're starting to see 5W20s, 0W20s emerge from those other players now in that market. Because okay. it's all about okay. reducing that internal friction. So, so the, 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 the lower uh, you can get that oil, uh, the, the, the thinner you can get that oil film, the less internal drag there is, the more fuel efficient that you become. But then the less loading it will take. Is that right? But then we're talking about bolstering that chemistry with, with polymer technology. So is that right? Base okay. oil is okay. good, okay? Base oil will put up with a lot of pressures, but as soon as you start to see that breaking down, then you rely on... With these on massive cylinder pressures oh, that we're getting. absolutely, right, yeah. Okay. So you still want to protect your bearings, your mains, you know, so your, your big end bearings. extra polymers in there to account for Absolutely. That. So they, okay. they, kind of, they kind of strengthen that oil film so you don't get that metal-to-metal -metal contact. So we've got to modify all these different things. We've got to modify the chemistry so we don't block the DPFs because it's smaller particular Bloody number. Hell. Um, higher temperature ratings, Bloody higher pressure hell. ratings. So, so the whole whole chemistry and the whole, these new formulations that we'll be looking at moving forward to Euro Seven, they're going to be a complete. So you're step all change. ready for Euro Seven when it comes in. A lot of the OEMs getting ready. We're seeing the technologies coming through from a development point of view for okay. for, for, for formulations and lubricants coming through, and. It will be a line drawn in the sand, so a lot of these new technology uh, lubricants will only be suitable for Euro 7 compliant engine Bloody architectures yeah, right, okay. and won't be backward compatible because they are designed around those new engines, whereas they will not suit an older engine type. Yeah, 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 yeah. Essentially, you're going to wear it out prematurely because there's not enough oil film, there's not enough, uh, there's not enough substance to, for, for an older, for yeah, an older technology yeah, yeah, engine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which Bloody which yeah. will be high mileage as well by the time you know 2025 comes along. Um, everything gets a little bit looser as it gets gets older and wears a little course, bit. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So it, you, you need the right type of oil. Yeah. So that's so another. It is another yeah. oil in the Absolutely. store that you need. So where people are being used to having a, having a single mixed fleet lubricant in a, in a barrel somewhere to do the whole fleet. Not now. They'll have to have a separate barrel for these new technology engines coming through. So interesting times ahead. Um, so. That's how we yeah. see kind of Euro 7 panning out. Um, obviously, when it does arrive, we've got to make sure as, as a company, as Morris Lubricants, we, we are ready. But that's where we see Euro 7 compliance putting pressures on, on the, the oil formulators uh, like ourselves and, and the OEMs in terms of their, their new engine architectures. So interesting times ahead. Right, so still, if not the, the way that Euro 7 is going, you know, we're seeing like a massive amount of oil in these and like figuring on mm -hmm. 50 litres of oil. Is that still going to be the same? Yeah, because you're still wanting the extended oil drain intervals. Right. I mean, so you still need that, 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 uh, that reservoir of oil to, to carry you for these extended oil drain intervals. The one thing that they don't want is obviously these oil drain intervals coming down because it's, it's downtime. More expensive. More expensive. So extended oil drains are, are still a requirement. The other interesting thing actually on the back of that is about making sure that our engine is compliant um, throughout its working life um, by digital monitoring, monitoring. So they're looking at digital monitoring now. That this is the, 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 the agencies that look after you know compliance in terms of emissions to make so sure that, that oil quality monitoring on board the vehicle. The actual engine itself in terms of its emissions, because obviously the oil plays a big part in making sure it complies with those emissions. Okay. 
But as soon as that engine starts getting out of kilter with the, the allowable technology uh, um, legislation limits, then this may be digitally monitored by external agencies. So you can't just can't get away with it anymore. Oh yeah, oh, it's, no. it's not, but then because it, it's it's an important the environment and obviously emissions are important. So it, it's got to be that tightly controlled. Yeah. So interesting times. Interesting. Times. Blow my mind. <laughs> Well, on that note, so if you'd like to see any more content like this or any more videos with Guy, then please visit our Morris Lubricants website or our YouTube channel.